Hi guys, Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon here. Today, I'm gonna to react to an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. So there's an episode where Chris reveals that she has urinary incontinence. They talk a little bit about it. So I wanted to use this as an opportunity to teach you guys a little bit about incontinence and what exactly is going on with her specifically. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my new videos every Monday. She just jumped and like she has to pee all of a sudden. Mom's <laughs> like, in her pants. My mom definitely has a history of peeing on herself. I totally just wet my pants. <laughs> I just wet my pants. I mean, I can't deal with this. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this whole episode. So she's having some sort of incontinence and there are two main types of incontinence that you can have are most commonly in women. So one is stress urinary incontinence and that's loss of urine that's associated with any sort of stressful activity like jumping as she is describing, Valsalva maneuvers like exercise, sitting from standing, all those things can cause stress urinary incontinence. You can also have urge urinary incontinence and that's loss of urine associated with this strong sudden desire to go to the bathroom that you can't delay. And so in this case, she obviously is doing a stressful activity, which is jumping. And then she gets this strong urge to go. It may be that she's just embarrassed that she leaked. And so she's running to the bathroom, or it may be that she has some urgency urinary incontinence as well as stress urinary incontinence. And that's called mixed urinary incontinence. That's actually very, very common. You're still peeing in your pants. Stop, Courtney. No, but once mom, in a while it comes out. Uh, I can't help it. Right. I don't think she's like trying to like just bash saying, you. She's get saying it checked like, out. hello, get it checked out. Once, okay, maybe you really had to go and I made you laugh. I don't know, but you smell like a pee pad. Thanks, Chloe. I'm trying to reconcile these daughters who are concerned about their mom, but then at the same time try to embarrass her. Continence is a very intimate and personal problem, and it is not nice to embarrass your family or friends who may be suffering from it because it's very embarrassing just in and of itself. Having incontinence can be very embarrassing for people. There's a lot of self-esteem issues with incontinence. So I think it's kind of unfair that they're telling her she smells like a pee pad to encourage her to go see a doctor. Certainly if she's bothered by her incontinence, you should absolutely go see a doctor because there are things we can do to help. So let's see what she does. We have the same exact taste. <laughs> Wait, not the same bladder. <laughs> Chloe, we're in a public place, so it's rude. My kids love to give me a hard time, but when it becomes really personal and they do it in front of complete strangers, it's just not cool. Mom, did you just go in there and pee? Stop it. I told you, cut it out. You should buy yellow sunglasses, Mom. And why might that be, my darling? It's gonna go with your new wardrobe that you buy. The yellow collection. Chris has a bladder problem, and I'm gonna tease her until she goes to the doctor and gets it checked out. Now there's customers over there trying on clothes, and they don't know me. Have you gone to the doctor yet? I didn't say anything. No. I really don't think that this is a problem that needs the attention of a doctor. This is a very little problem. I don't have time to go running to the doctor every time I have a leak. Do you make pregnant people walk up those stairs to go urinate? They do. It's really unfortunate. No. Oh, because my mom isn't pregnant, but she has a bladder of like a 20-month pregnant person. Chloe. Despite the daughters being very rude and offensive to their mother in a public place, I think the take home from this scene is if you have incontinence, it's totally reasonable to go see your doctor because like I said, there are very simple things that we can tell you that can help your incontinence. But furthermore, you're not bothering us. It's not a small problem if it's a problem to you and that's really important for you to realize. If you're not bothered, then it's okay. You don't have to. I totally get it. Sometimes you're too busy, you've got too many other health issues or other things going on and you can't see the doctor for incontinence and that's totally understandable but don't just accept it as a way of life if it bothers you and I see women all the time who have waited and lived with problems with their pelvic floor with incontinence for years and it breaks my heart that women feel like they have to wait that long or put everyone else's health their children their spouse their partner whatever before their own so it's important for women just 
take care of yourself, and we want to take care of you. <laughs> take away her beer, please. <laughs> what Don't you laugh got too hard, up. Leaky Leak. Oh, 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 God. Let me out. I have to go to the bathroom. Mm, no. Just let me out. I have to go pee. Come on. Bart, you let her out. Just clench. Clench and make the face. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, my gosh. Child abuse. Hello, oh, everything's good. Okay, yeah. Good. Good. Okay, Spice, you okay? Yeah. Everything's good. Everything must be Are we going to let her out? What, are you losing? Yeah, kind of out. Like, you guys let are rude to me. I want out. Let her out. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. That was her boot. The boot. Look at uh, uh, the boot. Okay, can I put my feet? Chloe. Chloe. Okay, really? <laughs> I feel really bad, but Chloe and I are definitely not going to let this one go. She needs to get it checked out. That was horrific. I can't believe they did that to their mom in a restaurant in a public place. I mean, just let her go to the bathroom. That's not the way to get someone to see a doctor. I'm just kind of nervous. Since 17 years old, I've been coming here for all these years. And suddenly I'm coming for like... I'm going through menopause, and I have all these weird issues, and my bladder leaks. This is like an old person's problem. I feel like it really sucks to get old, and sometimes I feel betrayed by my own body. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are, Are you, you ready? Guys? Yes. Well, what brings you in, anyway? My bladder kind of leaks when I do things like I was jumping rope with Kendall and Kylie. I never th saw myself having a problem like this before. But you do have six kids. It makes things a little looser in terms of the muscle. Menopause contributes to a certain degree as well. Um, you do these Kegel exercises? That's what I was going to say. Well, the last time somebody told me to do a Kegel exercise, it was like to get your for sexual reasons? Yeah. You should be doing those anyway. There's a couple things to talk about here. One is that she's clearly nervous, and this is so normal. One in three women suffer from some form of incontinence, particularly after the age of 45. And so this is very, very common. And while it feels super embarrassing, we see this all the time, and there is no reason to be embarrassed when you come see us. I want to know everything that's going on, what's causing the incontinence, how much incontinence you're having, how many pads you're using. I understand that it's a super intimate problem, but it's totally okay to come and see your doctor and don't let your embarrassment hold you back from getting a cure. And so he's talking about incontinence and what are some contributors. So certainly having vaginal deliveries and pregnancies can contribute to abnormalities of the pelvic floor. So it causes the muscles of the pelvic floor to be weak, which in turn can cause some stress urinary incontinence. It can also cause some nerve damage during the delivery itself, which can take several years to manifest. So that's why some people will not have incontinence for many, many years until their kids are 10, 15, 20 years old because of that delayed change in the muscle due to nerve damage during delivery. So yes, those things can contribute to incontinence. And he mentions Kegel exercises. And so I think it's important to realize that Kegel exercises are helpful in improving your pelvic floor musculature and can prevent incontinence. But you need to know how to do a Kegel exercises. And I will tell you, the large majority of women I see and I've seen over the many, many years don't know how to do one or are not doing one correctly. And so sometimes it requires the help of a pelvic floor physical therapist to help you learn exactly how to do a Kegel. I also tell my patients that when they're going to do Kegel exercises, they should start doing them lying down and really focusing on pulling up and in. And then as they get stronger lying down, you can then do them sitting up. And then once you're stronger doing them sitting up, you can do them standing and then you can do them really anywhere. It's also really important to realize that doing Kegel exercises for a few days or a few weeks is not going to be enough. You're going to be committed to doing Kegel exercises to help improve your incontinence because just like going to the gym, if you stop, the muscles get weak again. The same thing happens with Kegel exercises. If you stop, the muscles get weak again. And so you need to realize that if you don't want to do any other procedures for your incontinence and you want to do Kegel exercises, that's great. I'm 100% for that, but you need to commit to it. So let's just have a look. So do me a favor, take a little breath and cough for a minute. <coughs> now do a Kegel right now. Okay, so you have to work on those. Okay, you do have a little bit of what we would call stress incontinence, which is very common, even if you've only had a couple kids. But you can help that distinctly by doing these exercises. Now you can do these It's pretty normal for women to have this problem. I probably should have come to the doctor a long time ago, but I'm here now and that's all that matters.
All right, well, I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much, Thank Dr. Crane. Exactly. One, I don't know what he was looking at, that ultrasound picture. I'm not sure what he took an ultrasound of. Maybe it was to see how well she was emptying her bladder. But typically, this is exactly what your experience would be like coming to see a urologist or urogynecologist or a gynecologist. You come in, you talk to your doctor about what's going on with your leakage, how often you're leaking, how many pads a day are you using, what's causing the leakage, are you leaking at night, do you have urgency, like do you gotta go, gotta go. We'll ask you also about what what your fluid intake is like, how much caffeine you're drinking, what your sexual history is like, what your pregnancies have been like, and all your other medical problems. And then you'll do a physical exam, and that includes a pelvic exam. Exactly as they show, we'll be assessing for any incontinence. So we'll have you cough or bear down to see if that causes any leakage during the exam. And we wanna see the leakage, so don't be embarrassed. This is what we do for a living. We wanna be able to see it so we can know exactly what's going on. Also, we can do what's called a post void residual because sometimes incontinence is there because you're not emptying your bladder completely. So assessing that with a bladder scan, which is just a small ultrasound that goes on the belly and checks how well you're emptying can be helpful to let us know if you have any problems in that area as well. The visit is really not scary. There's nothing to be worried about. If you're ever uncomfortable, speak up and let us know and we can stop at any time. So for treatment of stress urinary incontinence, if you're having stress urinary incontinence, it's not going to cause immediate danger to your health. So if you say, I don't want to do anything about this. I just wanted to know that it was okay, then that's fine. We'll give you that information. We'll make sure that the incontinence is not from another cause that might be causing damage to your bladder or your kidneys or things like that. Then the next step is pelvic floor muscle exercise, which we've talked about a little bit already, but these exercises essentially are Kegels or pulling up and in with the pelvic floor muscles to squeeze. So there are no medications available for stress urinary incontinence, but you can have minimally invasive procedures to help with stress urinary incontinence. And these can range from bulking agents or injectables that are injected into the wall of the urethra that help bulk up the urethra and allow some resistance to your incontinence. These are minimally invasive procedures. You can have them without anesthesia and you go home the same day without any activity restrictions. The next option is a sling and there are different types of slings. There are slings made of mesh materials called mid urethral slings, or there are slings using your own tissues. And so both of these types of slings act as a support underneath the urethra so that when you cough, sneeze, or exercise, it's acting as a backboard for the urethra so that it's not moving as much and causing incontinence. And these are very, very effective, 80 to 90% effectiveness, depending on the type of incontinence you're having. And so those are the most common surgical treatment options for stress urinary incontinence. I can go into more detail about these in another video if you are interested, so please let me know, comment down below if that's something of interest to you. My take home for this video is please, if you're having incontinence, don't be embarrassed to come see a doctor. This is important. Your life and your quality of life is very important. And that's what I do. I take care of patients' quality of life. And I think that it's one of the most important things and the most valuable things that we can offer to patients is to give them back their quality of life. Thank you so much for watching. Always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.